Welcome to another video by Lame Creations. Log analysis made easy. We are going to work on demystifying getting logs into uh, a log analysis tool, and we're going to help bring your help you on your journey to being a cybersecurity analyst. So one of the things we want to do here is we want to cover another tool. In the previous videos, if you're following along, we installed Zeek so we could get network logs. Now we're going to ingest those logs. You'll notice here, I'm going to ingest the logs and I'm going to send them in. I'm going to use a tool called Cribble. It's funny, I'm going to send them to Splunk. Splunk has a universal forwarder. You could just use that, but I just want to show a different tool. This is kind of a neat little, uh, little tool that I really like. And so I'm going to use it that way. Even though I'm going to send to Splunk, if I wanted to send this to other systems, I could use uh, Cribble. And so it's, it's just a good tool to use. Anyway, I went to Cribble.io to download. And we can, we're just going to come over here to the download button. So we go Cribble, HTTPS, Cribble.io, hit download. And we have a cloud option community, Splunk, uh, Cribble, sorry. Cribble actually offers the ability to test this in their own personal cloud. So you can play with it without even installing it. But it's such a low, lightweight system. I recommend putting it on your own, on your boxes. But anyway, you come down here on the software, there's a few versions if you're using can install it on Windows, use the Cribble Edge for Windows. Otherwise, you can use the Cribble, uh, Cribble Edge and Stream on any 64-bit. We're not going to go into which each of these are. I just recommend, if you're using a 64-bit system, use this first option. If you're using an ARM solution, use this one. Um, anyway, I guess you could put the Cribble Edge on Windows that way. All right, so let's just go. We download this. We hit the download. I have already installed that. We're just going to come in here, clear this up. We're going to go to home. I've installed, I've downloaded the file here. It's sitting right here on my box. And what I'm just going to do is a nice little tar, tar minus XBF. And then name the file and then minus C and I'm going to put it in the op directory. I'm not going to press enter because I've already done it, but that's the command that you would run. And now if I go to opt, I can see there's my Zeek instance and there's my Cribble instance. In order to install Cribble, now that it's there, we want to go opt, Cribble, bin, Cribble, and I'm going to press start. This will take you, say, hey, here's your username and password. It'll give you a default username and password. You'll install. It'll just quickly install it from the command line, and you're good to go. It's going to open up by default port 9000 on your server, and then you can go access the box. After it's hit start, and so I'm going to, mine's already running. I can do status just to see what the status of my Kerbal instance is. We can see that it's up. We can see its port. Etc. So I'm going to jump over to my Cribble instance and it will put in your username and password. On your first time, it will tell you to change the password and it'll ask you to register. Go put your information. You can actually skip it if you want to. The registration process is no big it, But anyway, this free version will give you up to one terabyte worth of ingestion every day. That's going to work for a lot of things. You can do a lot of stuff with one terabyte worth of ingestion. All right, so I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to go to data, and I'm going to go to sources. Because Cribble by itself is cool, but I need to, I want it to gear up some sources. I have a video. I'll put it down below. It'll talk about how to t use Cribble as a syslog server um, for further information. But I'm going to do here file monitoring. I'm under system internal. I can use collectors. I can push data to Cribble. I can pull data from Cribble. And I'm just going to come here, file monitor. And if I come and click one, you can add a source or just modify the original one, put a name in, and then you have an auto discovery or a manual discovery. Auto is going to scan your entire operating system looking for certain files, particularly what you list here, or you can do a manual. I know exactly where I'm looking for, so I'm going to put it here. But this is one of the cool things. You turn on auto and you don't know about the logs you've got, it'll come back and tell you the logs you might be wanting to use. Anyway. I'm going to put my path in as op Zeke logs current, which if I go look here, we do a listing opt Zeke logs current. We can see there are my Zeke logs. So that's the right path. Uh, this is by default the the uh, extension is going to look for. I actually don't need this one, so I'm going to take it out. No reason to have it there. But it's going to look for anything start out log in this folder. 
That's all I need. I just put the path, file name, allow list, and I hit save. I give it a minute. In my case, it's already green, but yours might not be green immediately. Give it a minute. It'll, it should flip over and tell you what it's, it's, it's health. Hopefully, it's all good. Um, but you can test the data coming in. Again, give it a second, and then hit the live button. And this is going to go look across all the data that's being read. It's monitoring the system, and I can get some the sample data and say, ah, oh, yep, definitely data coming in. I can save it as a sample file so I can manipulate it later. Um, anyway, we're good there. Now we've got a route. We need a destination. And so I'm going to point mine to Splunk. But you could point to a lot of different tools. You could point to Elastic. You could go out to the cloud. You can do – there's lots and lots of options where to go to. One of the things you can even write to, you can write JSON files. You can do all, you can make it a syslog file, write it to your file system. Um, we're going to leave it alone. Output router, really cool feature, allows you to write to many locations. And so each one of these will be a different output location. Data, routing, keep my destination. So I'm going to have my Splunk instance. I'm sending it to my Splunk. Really simple. You just put in the uh, in the address, the port, and hit save. That's all you need to do. And you can actually watch is the data going to my Splunk instance. And this is how it looks. Awesome. So I got my data in. So that it was as simple as that to get the data into Splunk. So when we do that, we'll go routes, make a data route. And I made a Zeek. And in my Zeek. I made sure that my output was to the name that I put in that other folder. So if I go duplicate tab and I go data destinations, we can see that I made this Splunk instance. Oops, sorry, that's not where I'm looking. Okay, so I go to Z and so you, you can just pick your the, the location. So there's that Splunk. Splunk can go to Splunk. And so I make sure that that's the output. I can put other pipelines in there. We're going to discuss pipelines in the next video. I want to keep these short. So you, if you already understand the concepts, you don't have to spend a lot of time into it. But just like that, I've got my stuff going through. I set my data. I've got my source to be file and my destination to be Splunk. And then I'll be manipulating the stuff in this data route. And I hope this was helpful. I hope you keep coming back. I hope that we are moving you to being more lame less pain. We want to make your journey as simple as possible. Hope you keep coming back and watching the videos.